Playing a brilliant trill is very similar to baking. It has to be measured and extremely precise. It's not, let me just shake my arms and see how many pairs of notes I could fit in and hope for the best. Welcome back to Joy Practicing. My name is Ferdi Talan. Instead of thinking of playing many notes back and forth for two measures, just think about playing two notes at a time. Take it in smaller chunks. That's easy, right? This is also easy. Now see if you could combine the two to become three notes. What if it's the other way around? Start with the G. Now can you group it in four notes? Remember, I'm exaggerating the movement and as you get more familiar with the movements, it becomes smaller. So think about playing a series of groups of four notes. If I put it in context, it would be. For those of you who play basketball, you would understand the mechanics of dribbling a ball. You only need the first impulse to get the ball going, but then your response afterwards are pretty passive, at least until you need to change directions or rhythm. Trills are the same. Not all the notes in there are active notes. Only the first one of each group is active, but then the two, three notes following are all passive. It's like they happen because of the first note, like an echo. Another analogy that I could use to describe this is skipping stones on the surface of a water. The active note is like the first impact of the stone with the water. And then the passive notes are like the consecutive bounce before the stone plunges into the water. Active, passive. Active, passive. Now, if you do it in groups of three, groups of four, You must measure your trills. Look at how many beats you are supposed to trill, then measure and decide how many pairs, including if there's any turns, that you can fit in for your full intended effect. At the end of each group, you will need to renew your momentum to keep on going. The point of restarting is to give your body a reset, to give your physique a chance to breathe, otherwise it will choke. When you drive a manual stick shift car, whenever it shifts gear, it always has to come back to neutral first. I'm going to exaggerate the movement, but please keep in mind that the movement will become smaller and smaller as your body got more familiar to it.
don't milk a cow. Keep renewing your relationship with the keyboard, even though you're only repeating a sequence of two notes. You can come in little by little for a couple of groups and then come out. There are many ways of doing this, but staying and coming back to the same spot as where you came from is going to produce a dull sound. This will also make it much easier to play. Pay attention to what kind of trail the composer intended for and what effect is he or she looking for. A trail is not one and all the same for each and every piece and placement. There are different varieties of them. The main idea is to keep moving for melodic trills. One of my favorite way is to alternate between one, three, two, three. This obliges you to move because of the nature and different shape of the fingers itself. To give an mm to the trill, you could start by playing both of the notes almost together. For a more sparkling effect, group it in three and alternate accents between the two notes. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for the next coming episodes. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please write me at joyofpracticing at gmail.com. My name is Ferdi Talan. Until next time.